back when I first was getting into this thing, and I, I'd sought God for years, but I tried to make God my way. I was a Burger King Christian. I wanted God my way. I wanted him to, I want to be able to please God and please me at the same time, do everything I wanted to. And I finally got into this Pentecostal movement, which I didn't think was the movement that, you know, until I got into it. I didn't know anything about it. And, and, I, and when I did first get into it, I thought it was the craziest thing I'd ever seen, find people laying on the ground, wailing, carrying on. First meeting I ever went to, they were just nuts. They were just nuts. I made a big mistake. I went into the prayer meeting before the church service. There was women on the floor laying in there, and one of them was hollering, let go, let go. And the other one was hollering, hang on, hang on. It was crazier than anything you ever seen. And they tried to get somebody baptized in the Holy Ghost. they slap them a little bit, knock them to the floor. It was wild. I thought, what is this nonsense? As your pastor, I do not generally do these things. I do not preach on the woman with the issue of blood. Because everybody does it. I don't very often preach on the three lepers. They'll probably get in here. That sat at the gate. Well, everybody does it. You can hear it six times a week on TV. And I do not preach on Hebrews 11. We're going to preach on Hebrews 11. I definitely seldom preach on Hebrews 11 because everybody preaches Hebrews 11 on faith. But I look out there this morning and we need some faith. Faith always works. What do you mean it don't work? Yes, it always works. And everybody has faith about everything. Read the first line, Mr. Vernus. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay. You don't see it. It's the things you hope for. Or the things that you confess. That's right. Everybody has faith about every situation. But a lot of your faith is negative faith. Right. Faith is like a battery in your car. you got the negative post and the positive post. And you can be positive that you're negative, and you can be positive you'll receive the negative. That's right. I just know God can't do that. I ain't never seen that. Well, that's the stuff that God has not revealed to you as of yet. He says he can do it. He made the universe. He made everything around you. He made you, didn't he? Where you think you come from? Out of an egg? Uh-uh. God created you. He knew you before the foundation of the word. He breathed life into your great, 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 great grandfather out of a clump of mud. And he created you and he has the ability to do anything with you he wants to do. That's right. James 1, 7 says that, I think I got it right, double-minded man will... Say, receive nothing from God. It might be James 1, 4. I don't know. Anyway, that's all right. Don't need to look it up. Double-minded person will receive nothing from God. If you don't have the faith that God will do it, it won't happen. This faith thing is extremely hard to press into. We are extremely flesh. We are supposed to be extremely God, but we are extremely flesh. Right. We are supposed to literally become part of the body of Christ and we actually move into his body and we become part of Christ is where we belong. But in our mud, we have trouble getting there and so we end up caught between the two. And when we allow ourselves to be caught between the two and we doubt that God can do it, we won't receive it because we are in the negative zone. That's right. Now how in the world are we ever going to get on the positive side of things? As we preach and we preach and we teach on this and try and get it through, you need to get out of the flesh. As the old southerners say, they can't say flesh, so they say flush. You need to flush the flesh. That's right. 
You need to get rid of it. My leg hurts. Get rid of it. Forget it. Amen? You see, I could have had negative faith through my ordeal. And I could be dead. I could have taken every time that these words of grief and woe came to me. And the doctor came in and he says, you're going into an operation tomorrow again. This was after I went into an operation the day before. And he says, now, you may not come out with a leg. And there's a good... You know, there's a possibility you may die. And if we do have to cut your leg off, we don't cut it off short enough, the infection will rush up and hit your heart. And... I'll give you faith, all right. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 and to top that off, now let me, let me explain to you. This was every other day for four different times. One day they'd hack me. The next day they'd let me rest. And the next day they'd knock me out and hack on me again. And I laid there and I said, oh, God, I think I might die. <laughs> then I pressed in to God. I got out of the flush. My flush was needing flushed because my flush was sick. I mean, it was sick. In fact, if you want to see how sick it was, look at last year's anniversary pictures. And that is after I was well, according to the doctors. And I still look sick. And if you wanted to see me sick, you should have seen me when I was laying in the bed in the house. When everybody came in from church, I had to call another preacher to come in and preach church. And all the people that came to church that Sunday came in and visited me in my bed like I was already in my coffin. I, it, it, Linda had a, a system there. She had it all figured out. She says, he can't take more than two of you at once. So for all afternoon... She let them in two by two, like Noah put most of the animals on the ark. And then there's a couple families had a kid, so there was three, so they must have been clean. They were closer to seven, you see. But anyway, they lead them in there, and they looked down on me, and I thought, oh, my. This feels just like a funeral, and I'm the corpse. And they'd all pat me on the head and say, oh, poor pastor, you know. They really acted like they loved me. Some of them are gone. When I got good and sick. And then I was scheduled to do marriage counseling the next day. And I was going to do it laying in my sick bed. And they never showed. Their marriage is still a mess. And I believe the Spirit of the Lord would have straightened them out, even in my condition. Remember, I laid there awake, waiting, waiting. Worrying, why those folk don't show up? And they get straightened out. And then they hauled me away. Started hacking on me. If I would have had the faith that the doctors wanted to put into me, I would, I would be either, you know, wouldn't be in this boot. I wouldn't have nothing to put in the boot. Or I wouldn't be here at all. But that is not what I, when I pressed into God and I started talking to Jesus and I started to commune with the king of the universe, all of a sudden he gave me the spirit of God inside of me quickened and he says, everything is going to be all right. Don't worry. I got to where them doctors start coming into me and, and they come in and, and I'll still do this to him. Craig was there for the last one. And they come in and they say, well, you know this and this and the you might die. I said, yeah, I know it might die. That's okay. Let's go. I know better than you do what's going to happen here. Because I have faith in him who created me that I'm going to come out of this thing. All these people of faith that we look at here, things looked pretty impossible. Go ahead, Sister Vernus. For by the elders, for by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. He spoke this whole thing into existence. By his word. Now you are made in the likeness and the image. Literally in the Hebrew it says in the shadow of God you are made. And you're made to literally become into the family of God. You literally press in and you become part of the body of Christ. And Jesus is God. I'm reading a book on the name of Jesus. There is no other name. There ain't nothing else. It's Jesus. That's all there is. 
He's the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost all wrapped up in one. Plus wisdom and knowledge and you name it. All comprised in one holy entity that spoke the universe into existence. And you literally have opportunity to get in with him. And if he made it all, he can certainly fix whatever's wrong with you. Amen? Amen. If you can just get out of the flesh. If you can just get out of the flesh. He spoke it into existence. Read the next. <clears throat> Sorry, I lost it. <laughs> By faith, Abel offered a God to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, and though he and through it he being dead still speaks. By faith That's Enoch good. hold on. One person at a time. It'll take us a little while. We're saying Abel came out the better end of this deal? That's what it says. He had the more excellent sacrifice than Cain. And he was considered righteous. And he even spoke after he was dead because his spoke, blood spoke forth from the ground. Now, if you read the account, it doesn't look so good for Abel. He got dead. Amen? But he walked. Going with the faith, to make the faith work, to make your faith work out, you have got to be like Abel. What was Abel that Cain was not? Righteous. He was faithful. Well, that's what it... Mm -hmm. and, and to be faithful, you need to be what? You need to be obedient. So it all falls in together. You need to be obedient to the word of God and walk in his precepts if you expect to receive any from God. Otherwise, you are actually working in the negative faith. I know the word of God says that, but. You, you know what buts? Goats. Belly goats. Belly goats but. Yeah, but. I know it says, but that don't what it means. Yeah, it does what it means. That's what it means in many, many, many different translations. That's what it means. Just because you don't like it don't mean ain't what it means. So that puts you out of faith. You're not walking in faith because you're not walking in obedience to the word of God. And so you're putting yourself in the position, if you resist what the word says, and you say, that doesn't apply to me, you say that, then you are operating in the spirit of Cain. You understand that? It's the spirit of Cain that's disobedient. Cain was a bell. But you, you got to understand, Cain kind of went along with the word of God. He said, bring a sacrifice. And the word of God says this. And whether, whether it was, well, I think it had to be a blood sacrifice. But whatever it was, that whatever the instruction God gave to Cain, he twisted it around to suit his own feelings. Right. You get it? Who's got it? The word of God says, but I just, you know, God will, will you know, he'll be happy with my half-hearted effort. I'll, I'll do it in my own way. I know what God's word said, but I'll just, it, it not, doesn't agree with the, the way I was teached. It doesn't agree with all the stuff that I've been through. So I will just do it how I want to. Cain had faith also. He had faith that God would take him the way he wanted to be. Not the way God wanted him to be. Don't get into a Cain syndrome. No matter, I, I don't care what you've been taught. If the word of God says it, that's what it means. Don't twist it. Don't turn it, don't turn it into a pretzel and wind it around a different way. God will forgive you for ignorance. You know what it is to be ignorant? We always take it as sign of a derogatory term. Paul says, I do not want you to be ignorant, my brothers, of the gifts of the Spirit. What's that mean? 
unaware. I mean, it is not a sin to be ignorant. That's because you ain't never been taught, you ain't never been exposed, you ain't never heard the right stuff. But it is a sin to remain ignorant when the truth is laid before you. That's right. And that's not ignorance any longer. That is rebellion. Mm -hmm. Rebellion against the Word of God. And that's what Cain did. Lord, there might be six weeks of preaching here. Hallelujah. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But okay. without... I can say one person at a time. <laughs> Enoch. It, you know how little it says about Enoch in the Bible? Mm -hmm. It just said he pleased God and God took him. That's all. Just zap. He is a picture of the true church of Jesus Christ who walk in obedience. That's right. How did he please God? Because he had faith that God was and he did what God asked. And if you read the book Enoch and all the... The writings that are attributed to Enoch that aren't in the Bible, you will see that he just, whatever God wanted him to do, he going to do it. Whatever God wanted him to do, that's faith. Faith is linked with obedience. It's to believe what God says and believe he is able. Don't believe what you're looking at. It's so easy to believe what you can see. Amen? I see trouble. Well, you'll have trouble. I see sickness. You'll have sickness. I have faith. You'll have deliverance. Amen. God can't deliver me from them cigarettes. Yes, he can. He can't deliver me from my pain. Yes, he can. You got to have faith that you get next to. The one that is able. You literally press into where you are in with God. Amen. You know, a, a whole lot of this world knows an awful lot about him. They don't know him. That's right. Mm. They're not in with him. They know a lot about him. Or they think they know a lot about him. Or they think they know a lot about the Bible. And it, you run into people that got, a, they got some biblical knowledge just enough to be dangerous to make it into whatever they want. Yes. Amen. Who? Hallelujah. Go ahead. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's exactly what I've been preaching, isn't it? <clears throat> First off, you must believe that he is. And not only that he is, but he is able. That he is not just sitting up on a throne and ignoring you. That he's able to help you. If you'll get next to him. We need, we need to press into God and receive the blessings of God. He will bring you through. How long will you be in the dark valley? As long as it takes you to get enough faith to get out of it. Amen. Faith is not developed on the mountaintop. James 1 says that you receive these various minor trials for the perfecting of your faith. If your pastor would ever get where he belongs, now I don't want to drag you into this because it just might insult you a little, but if I would ever get where I belong, I would no longer have the trials because I'd be walking in perfect faith like Enoch. But if I got that perfect, I might not be around here anymore. I might just go zooming up into the heavens. Amen? By faith, knowing being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with great godly fear, preparing the ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. Okay. And Noah, the only man found righteous upon the earth. And that don't mean he was real righteous. It just means he was still pure. He didn't have no angel blood. 
fallen angel blood. That's right. But God still had mercy upon the rest of the earth. It, it didn't make any difference if they was followed up. If somebody would come to God, he'd accept them. Now, Noah, if I remember right, he was four or five hundred years old. I ain't sure which. I mean, he's getting powerful old already. And God spoke to him. Noah. Noah. Noah, build me an ark. Oh, there it is. Okay, God. I'll build you an ark. Whatever you say. I'm talking about faith here. God, what's an ark? Now, why would Noah ask God what's an ark? Because my Bible tells me it ain't never rained. So there ain't been much need for no boat, especially up on dry ground. He says it's a big boat for when the water comes. It's going to rain. What's rain? I'm talking faith here. Noah says, what's rain? I'm going to make water fall out of the sky. And then I'm going to cause the earth to burst open. And water to come up out of the bowels of the earth. And everything will be covered with feet of water. Now in this day and age, we take this story and we'd walk down to the Fruit Loop doctor. We'd go down and see him, and we'd, we'd say to him, God told me to build an ark, and it's going to rain. I'm going to put all the animals in the ark, save humanity and all flesh that lives. They're going to say, That's okay. <laughs> It's okay, Craig. That's all right. We got some pills for you. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be able to get this thing under, Brother Jones, we'll get this thing under control. You won't hear them voices anymore. <laughs> I heard it. And I believe it. And I'm going to preach it. So for a hundred years, there's an awful lot of mornings to get up. Start the morning off with a sermon as you're hammering together a boat. Big enough to hold all the critters. And eight souls so that humanity might go on. You, you might have faith that God can do something for you. You may have faith that you're going to come through, and you may be, a, be a believing it, but you're going to have a whole lot of people telling you it ain't so. How many told no it ain't so? All of them. Well, eight got on the boat with him, but it don't say much about him, and I ain't sure that it, it, whether just where they sat. I'm really not. I've studied this out. I've studied Enoch and all this stuff. Talk about. Hey, I really don't know where they sat. It just God needed some bodies to keep the human race going on the rest of them. And Noah's the one that had the faith. It didn't happen just the way Noah wished it would happen. It didn't come as quickly 
as he would have liked it. My deliverance from this broken up leg has not come as quickly as I would have liked it. But God spoke to me that I was going to be all right. And that this thing was not going to end. As a false prophet told me in my loss of my life and my ministry. And thank God it ain't taken a hundred years. But no, it took a hundred years. And the rest of humanity heckled him. The community at large looks at faith, full gospel, apostolic people and say, that's some crazy holy rollers down the street. Don't go down there. They're nuts. They believe God is real. We know God is in a box. We can just Go get him out of a wafer or something. It don't always come as quick as we want it to come. But if we press in to him who created us in the beginning, for in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word created everything that exists, and the word is Jesus Christ. He is the I am that I am. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end, and he is able. We need some faith. We need some faith that he is able. We need, we need to get out of this position where we think we're going to pump it up and make ourselves able, and we're going to let press into him. And he is able. He is able to heal your body. He is able to cleanse your mind. He is able to relieve any bondage that's on your life. He is able to save your children. How, how, how many did this morning did I preach into where you got some faith that God can do it? Raise your hand. If you got some faith that God can do it, that you're not going to look at doubt and sorrow anymore, but you're going to believe God is able. Amen? Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith. P.O. Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322, or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa. Public access television is not responsible for program content. John, chapter 9. We're going to teach and preach about healing tonight. Go ahead and read, Sister Vernice. And he said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. He said, I am he. 
Therefore they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Shiloh and wash. So I went and washed, and I received sight. Okay. You see, the man did something. Mm -hmm. He showed some faith. He did what the I am asked him to do. He asked him to go wash. And he did it. The church today has a problem with obedience. The church today doesn't want to do what God asked him to do. He says, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Anoint them with oil, and they shall recover. The church I used to go to when I was a young man, they said, Sister so-and-so is in the hospital. Why don't you think about her? They didn't even tell you to pray. And the command was not to pray for them, although afterwards it said the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He says to do this thing. Some oil. Go down four garage, get a quart. Some oil. Take it. Lay hands on the sick and anoint him. Pray for him. He might recover. He told him to go wash. Take a bath. Get baptized. That's what he told him to do. Peter said in Acts 2.38, he says, repent, every one of you, repent. He's quit sinning. Turn around, go another way. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this promise is to you and your children and all those afar off, as many as the Lord God shall call. All. Oh! That's right. Most of the church today. Oh, we don't care what it says, our tradition. We don't care what the Bible says, our tradition is. He is the one that has control of the mud. He is the one. He made it. He can command it. He can tell it what to do. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. And the Word was with God. And this is His Word. And it gives us instructions to live. And we walk by that. We'll see miracles. Amen? Amen. I want you to go back. To 856. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Who do you say he was? I am. Yahweh. He, he can do what he wants to do. He can take mud and make it into anything he wants to make it into. He can grow arms and legs. He can restore eyesight. If he wants to, he can grow some teeth for you. You see, in this country, we just limit God. That's right. I believe in it. I was praying. And I, as I was preparing for this a couple days ago, and I asked God, I said, how come I've seen so many cancers healed? And I saw so many epilepsies healed. And I've seen people with mental illness restored and healed. How come I don't see lakes growing on? 
I've had deaf ears open. Yes, I have. I had a prayed for a man down in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm not giving to me. There's a 50 preachers praying for him down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who used to wear a, carry a white cane, and he ain't carried one for 10 years. Since we prayed for him, or eight years, something like that. You remember that. It healed. His eyes weren't even fully developed. And he got eyes. But you see, the things that you can't see, you can have faith for. I think that's our problem in this country. The things that we can't see, we can have faith for. But I guarantee you what? I should have had more faith last night when I prayed for that man that didn't have any legs. But I looked down there. <laughs> and I saw he didn't have no legs. And I know that I'm supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. But when you're looking at empty legs. It's a little harder to raise up the faith. But it seems like when you get overseas, people, they're, they're kind of like John Hahn was when he, when he came into Pentecost. I was just too dumb to not believe it working. Now I've been around it too long and I'm not as good as I was. I'm telling you, I don't, I don't have the faith that I had. I'm building it up. It's, the the studying's brailed me up and I'm getting back to where I was and I've been through a lot of stuff. When I first started, I just, well, I pray for the sick and they got healed. They just got healed. That's right. You have a few times that don't happen and then we're backing off. Mark 16, 15 says this. I'm so full. I'm so full tonight. And he said to, the, to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. The church both cast out devils. I'm not saying all mental illness comes from devils, but a great majority of it does. Right. Lord, help me. Church don't cast out devils anymore. We just send them down to a rubber room so they can bounce around on each other. Crazy. That John Hans over there crazy. You think he can cast out devils? I think I can. I know I can. In the name of Jesus, because the I am himself dwells within me. The serpents here refer to the demonic devil's forces. Called him the old serpent, you know. Poisons. Demonic doctrines. Doctrines of devils. Oh, but it's dual, too. I've been stung by so many bees and allergic to it, and I just pray and it don't do nothing. And if you need bee, you should accidentally drink some deadly thing. He'll protect you. Don't mean to go out and tempt God and grab snakes, bees, and deadly things to drink. Then he says, but you can grab the devil by the tail. Send him a-running. Because the I am is in you. If, if we can just get our brain up to the point that we understand what we've got. In Acts 1.8 he says, I will give to you power when the Holy Ghost came on you. You walk into beings, do what he says. There's a promise I already told you about. Amen? You're going to get it. Hallelujah. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So and after the Lord had spoke to them, he was received up into heaven and set down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached. That's why I stopped. Because of the, you from playing. Went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them. Mm -hmm. 
He worked with them who preached, confirming the word through the accompanying signs. But before we can receive healing, we have to recognize the authority we have in Christ. Our problem is we don't recognize what we are. We do not recognize that Jesus said, I want you to be one with me like I am with my Father. God is like the trunk of a tree. He's the trunk. He is the substance, the source, the Father. Jesus is a branch off of that tree. It calls him the branch, amen? And off of that branch, he says, he will send vines. And we are the vines off of that tree. And running through the whole thing is the Holy Ghost, which is the sap. The trunk, it sits there, and it is the foundation for the thing. Amen? And it holds it up, and it hits what? The big old trunk, and it holds it in place. And the branch, what's it do? It reaches out. My, my, my. It reaches out. And, and, and you know what bears the fruit on the tree? The vine. The vine bears the fruit. The vine bears the fruit. The branch holds it up and supports it, and it goes to the trunk, and it gets its nourishment and its strength from the trunk, and the trunk, and it flows out into the branch, and then the branch instills it into the vines, and the vines, by the Holy Ghost, bring the fruit, and you are the vine. But we just can't get it in our simple little human heads that we are literally connected to God. We are actually one. When we press in and get with him, we become one with Christ and nothing is impossible. That's right. Absolutely nothing is impossible. Say to this mountain, be removed and it should go. But we always run into this one little problem that we need to quench. When, when you see men of faith that have walked the walk and talked the talk, these miracles never cease to happen. We are seeing that there must be some faith rising up in this group. There must be some power. These vines must be getting some nourishment off of the branch and sucking it out of the trunk and bringing it out to bear fruit. Because Brother Dennis gave me a report last night that cancer and a blood clot, gone. We prayed for somebody clear overseas. Or no, clear on the other side of the country. Clear on the other side of the country. A pastor healed by the mighty hand of God because the branch reached down to the vine and the vine started to cry out to the trunk and the trunk started to pour out the Holy Ghost and it started to bring healing. The vine is tapping into the branch, and the branch is pulling out of the trunk, and we're starting to see fruit. Amen. we got to continue and, and press in further that we realize that what we have in Jesus Christ, we've got, we've got to start to realize what we have in him and what we can receive from him. Amen. You want healing? You've got to reach in and pull into the branch and let him suck into the trunk and let that flow out of you and let the Holy Ghost flow out of you and let the signs and wonders and miracles that are supposed to be in the church come to pass. Amen? Amen. I said to that miserable cold germ that tried to get me, go, and it's gone. Amen. Didn't get me. I only got mean for one day, two hours. And it ain't got her at all in Jesus' name. They hit, hit the, Sister Vernus was a, looked next to death last night. We prayed for her last night. It's gone today. She, I mean, she looked bad. But the power of the Holy Ghost took it because we reached into the supply. The supply is there if we just got enough sense to reach into it. 
Amen. And it's applied for everything that we need comes from him. Amen. <laughs> you got most of the church today don't believe none of this stuff. Amen. Yeah, the bark's just curled on them. There's nothing but a dead, dead tree. Dead vines. Yep. What's he say about the vines that are dead? What's he say he's going to do about them? them this on. afternoon, Linda went over to, did you know she talks to plants like they're alive? They are alive, you know. She talks to them just like they were a cat. Just like the cat could answer, so which sometimes I think it does. And she talked to this plant today. And I says, what should, she says, this plant is looking bad. And I said, and she says, what should I do to it? And I says, you should prune out the dead wood. Cut out those dead vines. Cut out those sickly vines that are not receiving the sap, that are not coming into, the, that don't look good, that doesn't have that flow and that power. And that's what God is going to do in this church. He, in, in the church. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ, whoever thinks they might be in it. That's right. He is going to prune out the dead wood that don't believe in signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. That don't believe in Jesus' name, all things are possible. Amen. He's going to prune it out, and he's going to set it over there, and it's going to become the false church that will raise its head up in this end times, that will let anything happen, that will have no holiness, that will have nothing to do with God. That's right. This church has nothing. That church on the other side of the fence, it has nothing to do with God. It has all to do with man and how man wants it. it has no holiness, had nothing to do with the scripture. They will make it say whatever they want to make it say. They will use old documents they dig up and warp them and make them say anything they want it to say. They have a hybrid seed, a counterfeit word. That's right. Condone any kind of activity and still think they're in line with Christ. Let it be known that there shall be no healing. There shall be no signs. There be, shall be no wonders in the church that won't get right with God and get holy. That's right. A lot of discussion in the church about what it means to be born again. Some say it's a ritualistic thing. It's because you're baptized in Jesus' name, which you should be, and in water, and that you, that you speak in other tongues, which you should. In fact, I think you almost need. But the evidence of being born again is a changed life. Amen. The evidence of being born again is that you are no longer what you were in the past, but you are a different thing. You are a new creation. And when the people in the world look at you, they say, this ain't the same person. Right. And there's no re there's it's no wonder when you truly become born again and you are born of water in the spirit and you have the power of the living God inside of you. Right. And you submit to his principles that your old friends will peel away. That's right. They're gonna go one way or the other. They're either gonna get saved and get right with God, or they're gonna go completely the other way. You are going to have the benefit of of the branch. Amen. You will have healing. Hallelujah. Malachi, fourth chapter somewhere, Vernus. Okay. I ain't got all the notes here just right. I can tell you that right now. Okay, it's... Uh... Uh, two. Four, two? Uh, yeah. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. Okay. That you who fear have awesome respect for what name? The name of Jesus. The name of Yahshua Messiah. Yahshua, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Those who have, what? Do you mean that you have to have a little bit of fear of God? Does that mean you have to have respect for what he says? Do you mean I can't just say, Jesus, I'm yours, now I'll go do what I want to do? And expect to receive blessings and healings? See signs, wonders, and miracles? No, sir. Why? 
whole lot of people. Get me right, I'm watching this on TV. A whole lot of you people think you saved and born again. And your life witnesses that you are born of the devil. That's right. For he says, in my kingdom shall be no liars, no fornicators, no dogs. That's homosexuals. You won't be there. Not going to be there. Backbiters, gossipers. Because when you're truly born again and the Spirit of God resides in you, then you start to be fed from the trunk to the tree to the bench to the vine. And the fruit will come. It will be the fruits of righteousness. Amen. And healing will be in the wings. Amen. Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought this was going to be a gentle healing service. Ooh. Luke 9, 16, 6 through 11. I'm not going to keep it long. I just want us to recognize what we got. So they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done by, by him, and he was perplexed because it was said by some that John had risen from the dead and by some that Elijah had appeared and by others that one of the old prophets had risen again. Okay. He went and preached the gospel. We in our, I, I'm talking to every one of you in here and anybody that thinks you're born again watching this on TV. That's your responsibility. That's right. To preach the gospel. You might not be up on the platform. You might be in the grocery store. You might be at the gas station. You might be almost anywhere. And you are to be the witness of Christ. That's right. Endued with power from on high. Mark 16, 15 says this. I'll, I'll get it. You don't have to. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And those that believe and are baptized shall be saved. And those that don't believe are damned. That's right. You know what damned is? Going to hell. Cursed for eternity. Right. Burning in flames of fire. You want to get healed from that? Believe and be baptized. Now everybody, Lord Jesus, <laughs> everybody, will say, not everybody, most all the church, what calls themselves the church, will say that you have to believe and be baptized. Or be baptized and be saved by being baptized. At some time in your life, even when you don't know nothing. But you have to have belief. And then it says this strange and phenomenal thing that most of them don't want. In my name. In the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. That's right. You're going to be baptized in that name. You're going to be baptized from on high. You'll be baptized in water, and you'll be baptized in the Spirit as the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you'll have the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's right. Such as it happened in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost. And these signs shall follow them that, I, that believe. They shall give out biscuits every Tuesday. They shall give away lots of eggs. They shall take benevolence offerings for every poor soul that comes along. They'll give drunks money so they can stay drunk. Is that what it says? No. Huh. In my name, they will cast out devils. That's right. Walk into most of the churches in Johnson County and commence casting out devils and see who gets cast. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been in Pentecostal churches, thought they were Pentecostal churches, thought they had what it was all about. I started casting out devils and they never invite me back. 
They get more people saved in one night than they've ever seen. They say this is the most miraculous thing I've ever seen, but you scared all the young preachers. You scared them to death. They might invite my wife to come. You got to be watch out because when the devil's coming to her, she'll come after him too. Speak in new tongues. Well, I believe in all that stuff in the Bible. I just don't believe in that tongue stuff. Get your big black and mark, magic marker, mark out that tongue stuff, and then just mark yourself out of the book of life all at the same time. That's right. Because either he is what he says he is, and he is the trunk, the vine, the branch, and all this thing, and we're all tied together one with God, or it just ain't nothing at all. That's right. Either it is what it says it is, or it is what it is, or it ain't nothing at all. It's just another dead religion. Just another pile of nonsense. Just another Hare Krishna, another Buddha, another one of the hundred thousand gods in Hinduism. You go with them and see if they start to bear fruit. See if cancers disappear. See if the lame walk and the blind see. See if it happens. You go into this great Mohammedan religion and see if anybody gets healed. That's right. You see, when it says to preach the gospel, these signs and wonders shall follow. Right. These self signs shall follow them but the belief. They'll cast out devils. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up deadly things, and that's talking about devils, and the devils can't touch them. They'll hit any deadly thing, and it shall not harm them. And they will lay hands. And this is where we're at tonight. We're talking about him. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. You are available to be born again. It is available to us because of a sacrifice God himself made. He sent him to a cross. He shed his blood for you. He let his body be beaten and bruised for you. Isaiah says, by his stripes, we are healed. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.